Hey Leo, uh, Everlong Mystic here. So it's it's been a minute, but we're gonna get you a message. We're gonna use mostly the um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, musical alchemy of astrology deck. But we're gonna start with a couple Starman because I have it because I I have it out. So my voice is still a little bit hoarse because I did get a little bit of the flu, but I am all better. All right. So this is the third third version, I think, of the prototype deck, and it is so close to being ready. Leo, Leo, Leo. Sneak it out there. All right, so we have wild. We have converted. And we have tongue tied. That's different. Wild, converted, tongue tied. Optimistic. Becoming, or becoming I. Shrouded. I don't know about this. <clears throat> Seems a little bit worrisome. This may not be coming from you, so let's, um, <clears throat> let's get some, I'm just looking, we're just looking at the backs of the cards here. They have, each card has like light and shadow aspects on the back, and depending on if they're right up or, or reversed, um, you'll get additional information that kind of comes through. I'm just gonna grab this little bitty oracle deck <clears throat> and put... One card there to help clarify what some of this stuff is about. Well, we have the ocean. We have the ocean coming out here under the I am wild <clears throat> and I am optimistic. I'm gonna look in the little. I mean, it makes me think like the ocean, it's pretty vast, right? And it kind of makes me think that there's a, there's a bigger picture going on here, but I'm gonna look in the little book since this is a new oracle deck for me. We're just gonna see what the intended meaning was. <clears throat> the ocean reminds us how small we are and shows us how to surrender to the unknowable. There we go. It's surrendering to the unknowable. I do like that there is an optimistic um, energy here with, with that surrendering to the unknowable. Um, I feel like this wild part here, there is, um, and it even says, fearing nature's forces. Um, it's, it's kind of like your, like an internal backlash or something. Oh, the imagined place. 
I like this card. So the imagined place is kind of like this safe, it feels kind of like a safe place that you have <clears throat> kind of conjured up yourself um, with your imagination. And, but it's not just about daydreaming, it's, it's about um, kind of using your, <clears throat> your imagination, your creativity to explore, really. There's, because <clears throat> it, you know, like, there's, there's little nuances that appear or disappear or change um, when it comes to <clears throat> whatever, like, things that you imagine. Um, <clears throat> I, I love the exploratory feel of it. And it's coming out in between converted and becoming. Now I do like here on the converted edge, it has, it talks about shadows that are lit from different angles. And that's one thing in the imagined place. There are like, there's little nooks and crannies. There's little, like, like if this house was your imagined place, like there's, you know, like the different stairwells and different cabinets to open and different hallways to go down. And, you know, it's like, um, <clears throat> it's, there are things to discover. And here I do like the I am becoming section. It's, it's talks about being receptive and, um, to muse, to muse magic. I can definitely see this imagined place being <clears throat> a place where, like, that can be amused for magic. <gasps> the Queen of the Night. I have not seen this card yet. Wow. The Queen of the Night. That is giving, um, <clears throat> dark, dark femme vibes which are some of my favorite vibes. But let's see what the book says about this. Queen of the Night. Just sounds so elegant and almost royal in a way. And royal is an energy that Leo, your, your sign really can encompass. Like Leo is so good at uh, encompassing that energy of royalty. I feel like I just said the same thing. Anyway, Queen of the Night, what is that? <clears throat> okay, the Queen of the Night is a sign to look for beauty in the darkness as well as in the light. Oh, I love that. Uh, that might actually have to be top, top three cards I've ever seen in that deck. Okay. Let's, let's move on. Let, let's finish this here. Okay, I am tongue-tied. Now, this tongue-tied card, um, the, the card that has the tongue-tied on one, one edge of it, it's, um, it, it, sometimes it's misleading for me because tongue-tied for me is one thing, but there's all these underneath layers of it, like what's causing it or what it's related to. Like, it talks about intoxications talks about sexual obsessions. It talks about needing to be loved by everyone or overstepping personal boundaries. Um, and it's, and it's interesting that it's coming out with this queen of the night because there are these, um, delicious things in the darkness that are not necessarily bad or evil or whatever. So, there's something, it's almost like there's a lightening up of some of these things. And then here we have, I am shrouded, rotten, odiferous, sulfite allergies, never a thing in moderation. Brimstone vapors, now that's stinky. You got some stank, you got some stank going on here. <clears throat> It seems like you've got some stank here, and you've got, like, what sound like a lot of personal problems. Now, they may not be your personal problems, but it seems like, um, that's, that would be the darkness, right? In the, in the Queen of the Night. You're more like, um, 
like the eye of the queen or something. You know what I mean? So anyway, let's um <clears throat> let's flip some cards and see see what else is going on here. Princess of Swords. Yeah, something has completely opened up for you. Like um <clears throat> there's been some light shed on something somewhere for you. It's it's kind of like um what I'm it's funny what I'm getting from this is like wait hold up like what hold on um let me I'm I'm gonna go get my purse I'm coming I'm go I'm gonna go I'm gonna go check it out like I'm ready like some new information has come to you and it has opened up a whole section of something <clears throat> oh maki maki okay. So we have Maki Maki here, environmental, wis uh, environmental Wisdom. It is, it has been for me coming out as um, knowing what's around you, knowing what's in your vicinity almost, like your environment. But there is this, this part of it about like the well-tempered warrior and cosmic egg hunting. I, um... I think there's something like there is some kind of quest, questy, searchy kind of thing going on. Um, because I don't think that you are oblivious to your surroundings. The, the This princess of swords just seems very prepared. Like she's, she's paying attention. She's uh, almost like ahead of her time. She could even... She, it's almost like she, she may still be Princess of Swords, but she's <clears throat> very, very close to crossing, crossing that threshold to Queen of Swords. You know what I mean? All right. A pause. All right, so you're getting, um, musically, <clears throat> you're getting a pause bar here. Now the the remove ret uh, retrograde grade card, it's um. It does have the celestial songbird in it, and I don't know if that's what you are searching for here, or like that's what the quest is about to <clears throat> find, like the celestial songbird in you. But the, like, the type of song that it's talking about here is an emotional power ballad. Like, something you can really sink your teeth into. Something that, like, gives you the full-body goosebumps, you know what I mean? Oh, and then Sappho shows up. Hey, Sappho. Alright, so, Sappho is showing up here. To kind of help with this, uh, with a transition of something. It is, it's 41, that's a 5, so there is a bit of change involved. Um, <clears throat> but the main, the main theme of it is electrifying wordsmithery. Sensual serenading. Now, that's another, I mean, if we're just going, like, musically, you, you're going from an emotional power ballad to a sensual serenading. And it's... It's, um, I don't know, it just feels elevated, it feels elevated in a way. Like, there's nothing wrong with either one, not one is better than the other, but like, um, it's, it's like you are, <clears throat> like you would listen to an emotional power ballad a lot of times for yourself, right? For whatever reason, uh, you know, whether it's to pump you up or if you need to shed some tears or what have you. But the sensual serenading, a lot of times that's, you know, that's for others. Like, you're, it's coming from you for others. And I do like here how it says being truly human. Because it seems like it's, it, that's something that you're, you're embracing here. All right, let's look at the next row here. Oh, poo. So we have three of swords. Um, 
What's interesting, though, about the Three of Swords in the Starman deck is that the heart, you see, is totally intact. The heart is intact, so I don't really think it's about so much about the standard meaning of the Three of Swords with all these knives just slicing your heart open and you're just gut-wrenched and all that. It's not about that. It's, um, I think it's more about the swords themselves. It's almost like you are, like, let's say if you were this person down here, <clears throat> you're making a choice to not use the swords. You're like, no, I can't do that. Like, and again, it's like you tuning in to your, your truly humanness here and just like, you're not going there. Like, you don't want to cause the Three of Swords feeling for someone else. I just, I'm getting a lot of compassion here from, from you, Leo. Sweet kitties. Okay. So what's next? Ooh, semi-sextile. Tangible path of potential. So there's something here. There's, there's something to this. So what does it say? Fledgling footsteps, lapping waves, ebbing new life, sensing change, tasting incoming possibilities. Yeah, I think you're, you are sensing change. I think just with this ocean here, that can help you. <clears throat> that can help you. Because it's like it talks about lapping waves. I mean, hello, what is this a picture of? Lapping waves. <laughs> ebbing new, like ebb and flow, right? You're supposed to surrender and... I think this, this is great advice coming through for you just to get this tangible path of potential. You know what I mean? Oh, cool. Um, Scorpio got this card, the Crocus of Mars. So I love this because this is your true colors shining through, Leo. True pigmentation. And what, um, man, I should have said this for Scorpio, but like something I, that came through with this card when, um, <clears throat> I was reading it for Scorpio was that, um, we don't always, I don't think we always have a true picture of all of our, all of our true pigments, like all, like all at once or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, um, they, like, as we live our lives, as we grow, as we learn, da 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 da, <clears throat> like the, the colors become more true and, um, the, the colors like fill in more, you know what I mean? Like there may not be one color in the beginning, but eventually a pigment of your true pigmentation comes in. You know what I mean? I don't know. It sounds kind of out there, but, <clears throat> but like, um, it's almost like you're going to be tasting a new pigment of yourself. Ah, sulfur. Man, sulfur, it's it's so funny. This card has surprised me twice already. <clears throat> because the shadow aspect of it on the back is pretty rough. <laughs> it's pretty rough. I mean, rotten, stinky, um, nothing in moderation, brimstone vapors. It's like over the top, right? Like the shadow part. But you turn it over and... It is just beautiful. It's like this, um, you know, you've got like this water here and just sparkles on it and all of this yellow and the sunshine. It's like, it's beautiful. <clears throat> and it's about sparkling new narratives. And it's like you're, it's like you've, it's, you've got the energy of your soul in it. The soul of all living and material things. A flash of inspiration. No way, look at that. It says ahead of the game. 
that's what this princess of wands is ahead. She's ahead of her game. She's barely a princess. She's like mo almost like she's borderline queen. But yeah. <clears throat> oh, and the queen of the night. Ah. Well, there we go. I like this, Leo. So yeah, you've got this, this, um, you've got this major humanness that you are just digging. Uh, it's, it's becoming on you. And you are, you're making the right choices, right? Because of that closeness you have to your humanness. And you, you've got this path of potential that um, I think you're ready for. And you're going to taste some of these colors. And that, that's not like a Skittles commercial, but like you're going to, you know, maybe you're going to taste the rainbow. I don't know. <laughs> but it looks really good. I like it for you. All right, Leo. So this is your, this is your message. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye, Leo.